Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. First, uh, let's, we're all already standing, I was going to say, let's all stand <laughs> for the presentation of colors. Now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning again. Good morning and what a great day in Lexington. Today Lexington becomes a safer city with the opening of our Public Safety Operations Center. A lot of people have worked on this project. We are crowding the winner circle today. Let's give everybody a big hand. Okay. I want to first welcome our council members. Council members Hanson and Masadi are here, as well as Angela Evans, Richard Maloney, Amanda Mays Bledsoe, Kathy Plowman, and Susan Lamb. I also want to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Scott Gould, who has a challenging job. He's in charge of the chemical weapons storage at Bluegrass Army Depot. And Michael Dossett, Kentucky's Director of Emergency Management. Also here today are Public Safety Commissioner Ronnie Baston, Deputy Director of Kentucky Emergency Management, Wayne Bird, and Mary Ann Blodgett, who started the LexCall program in 1997. Also, Mark Schull, CSEPP, Jennifer Adock, and John Egham. Let's give them all a hand of applause. Thank you all. Uh, everyone who's here illustrates that this building is all about partnerships partnerships both inside and outside of Lexington. Outside of our city, there are partnerships with the state and federal government, which in addition to considerable expertise, contributed about five and a half million dollars in grant funding to this project. Thanks to state emergency management, E911, and to the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program. Now inside the city, this building represents a partnership designed to respond effectively and efficiently to citizens' needs. Many of the citizens calling the center are dialing 911 in an emergency, and many are calling LexCall 311 for city services, and many will call emergency management during citywide emergencies. When the partnership expands to include representatives from across our community, like the Red Cross, local hospitals, or social service agencies. This center supports better, more accurate, and more appropriate emergency response and better communication with citizens throughout the year. But it's really, uh, it's the people, of course, and it's the technology, the very latest, that makes this center special like the modern digital radio system linking E911, police, fire, emergency management, corrections, airport safety, Fayette County Schools, and other government divisions and agencies, and their state-of-the-art 911 and LexCall 311 telephone technology. We focused resources on technology and found a way to save on the cost of the building. Because we reused an empty city building, that's what this was. It was an empty city building. Because we reused this empty city building for this center, 
We saved about $23 million over earlier plans for a new building. Now we're going to start today with our partners outside of Lexington. First, I want to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Scott Gould from Bluegrass Army De Depot. Scott. Good morning. Glad to be here today and uh, very proud to be representing uh, the U.S. Army uh, here today. Uh, to all the distinguished uh, guests assembled here, uh, welcome. Uh, I am the commander of the Chemical Bluegrass Chemical Activity down at the depot, uh, just a little bit south here by Richmond. We are responsible for the safe and secure storage of the chemical munitions, some of the last remaining chemical munitions, chemical stockpile in the United States, and we will, we're committed to that uh, safe and secure storage until those weapons are ultimately destroyed, which uh, as, as the, the plant is, is building and running up, we hope here uh, to be sometime here in the relative near future um, to happen. But you know, this is, uh, as, as was outlined earlier, uh, this is really about a partnership. Uh, for us, we inject into this partnership through the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program uh, which is a great partnership between the Army, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, state and local governments. And so we represent this here today with, you know, as part of this EOC, uh, this Emergency Operations Center or the Public Safety Operations Center. Um, and uh, so down at the Bluegrass Chemical Activity, we are tied into this uh, Public Safety Operations Center through various means so that if an emergency were to happen on the depot that would impact up here, uh, we have uh, very direct and quick communications to be able to take appropriate actions and inform the public. Uh, so this is a very big step, a very important step in, in ensuring that, that public safety because really if you look at the motto of the chemical activity, it's safe today and safer tomorrow. So this makes us safer tomorrow as we go towards the uh, demilitarization of the chemical stockpile. Uh, the risk from the chemical stockpile is very low, and so what's really great about this, uh, this operation center is that it is all about preparedness and safety of, of, the, uh, of the public. It is uh, about the safety of, of beyond just, you know, large-scale events that could happen. It is, as was mentioned, 911 calls or even information calls, and, and this will continue on beyond the uh, chemical stockpile emergency preparedness program uh, is, is done here in the Bluegrass region when those chemical munitions are destroyed. Um, so it pro provides that long-term capability uh, for the safety of the folks of Lexington. Um, and, and I will point out that one of the, the things is that many folks, many of the people that work for me, down at the depot live up here in Lexington. So really it's protecting the families uh, because we are members of the community as well and, and, and very proud to be part of that community. So thank you for letting me come here and be part of this uh, great event and I uh, look forward to uh, continued cooperation and partnership with the, uh, with the city and the county. Thank you. Thanks, Colonel. Now, I can also want to thank our next speaker, Michael Dossett, who is Kentucky's Emergency Management Director, and ask if Michael will speak now. He's right, right behind me. I was wondering where you were. Thank Good you, to sir. see you again, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gray, Lieutenant Colonel Gould, Commissioner Baston, uh, honored federal, state, and local guests. Uh, you're going to hear the word partnerships many times today. On behalf of Governor Bevan and our Commonwealth agencies, we're extremely pleased to offer our congratulations on the completion of your new Public Safety Operations Center. Today is all about partnerships. Uh, a very brief story about our partners on the East Coast, uh, those folks in the states of Florida and Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. We actually have a team that is comprised of uh, a number of, of county employees with state employees in South Carolina right now assisting in that effort. So it is about partnerships. Um, set out in the vision of Kentucky Emergency Management, the division is dependent on legacy relationships that we strive to grow. Through constant communication with our partners, like the Lexington Fayette EM program and their allied agencies. 
We take this time today to congratulate the Lexington Fayette government and all of its emergency responders for the exceptional partnerships we in state leadership have enjoyed for many years. Partners share the camaraderie of the highs and the lows that ultimately sets the cadence of our jobs and emergency services. In the fields of preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation, during crisis and emergency incidents in our communities and across the Commonwealth. This new operations center enhances your capabilities to accomplish our service goals on all counts. As the state oversight for the FEMA CSEP program, we take pride in playing a small part in the funding mechanism. Approximately $5.5 million in federal and state funds, money that assisted your journey, and I was very pleased to learn the legacy. This began in 2007, the planning for this effort, and that's a great, great journey. Uh, we're, we're appreciative of being able to assist in that, in realizing the completion of the state-of-the-art communications center. As an integral community in the coalition of 10 CSEP counties, Lexington Fayette government is charged with the safety and security of the second largest urban population in the Commonwealth. With the completion of the operations center, arguably the last and most important piece of the CSEP communications continuum is now in place. Let's give each other a big hand for that. Again, we're pleased today to congratulate the Lexington Fayette government, all of your emergency service programs on the completion of the Public Safety Operations Center and look forward to the enhanced interoperability for all first responders in the area. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Our council members have also been major partners in this initiative. First council, first district, first, not first district, where is Peggy? Right here, here she is. First, I wanna ask council member Peggy Henson, who will welcome us to the 11th district. There we go. Thank you, Mayor, and I can tell by the great number of people here that this is a popular, important project for Lexington. Uh, and I want to say, uh, give a big kudos to our mayor and his staff, as well as all the division directors for making this a reality. For 10 years, this property was vacant in the 11th district. It was an eyesore for the neighbors that live around here, but now we, we not only have an operations center that's extremely important to the city of Lexington. It helps the neighbors that live around it. Um, I um, want to give you a little history. Growing up in this area, I remember my friends that lived here, and I remember Judy and Debbie and Loretta. There was, on the grounds was a orphanage. So there was a boys on one side and girls on the other building. So I, um, and I actually got to spend the night there with one of my friends who was in the orphanage. So when I come here, I always have to think about them. I don't have a lot of contact with the people now in the area, but hopefully we will soon. And I just welcome this so much for the area and the city of Lexington. Thank you very much. Peggy, thank you so much. While we, uh, just a little bit after we started, I was alerted that we have some additional council members who have joined us. Council members Fred Brown, James Brown, and Bill Farmer. Thank you all for joining us. All right, now I wanna ask the chair of the council's public safety committee, council member Jennifer Masati, to share some remarks with us. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Members, and all the rest of you who have come to attend this um, state-of-the-art Public Operations Center grand opening. Um, this is a top-level, comprehensive nerve center that will serve our community's needs for many years to come. In addition to being an impressive new home for the City's Division of Emergency Management, who does a tremendous job with our emergency preparedness efforts, and the home to our terrific staff, 
of LexCal and 311, the city's centralized service and information center, this vital facility will now also handle all emergency and non-emergency calls for service for both police and fire, and our hard-working communications personnel will dispatch our police officers and our firefighters from this building around the clock. Clearly, this facility will be a hub of essential activity both day and night and we certainly appreciate all you do for our city, and I want to thank you, and so does the rest of the council. I'd also like to take this time to recognize someone who's been at the forefront in the relocation of this multi-million dollar public facility, operations facility, and that's Rick Curtis. As, as As the mayor has uh, indicated, and so has Councilmember Henson, that this, this center began the thought of this in 2007, and Rick was involved from the start. From day one, he has overseen the numerous minor and major details involved with this complex relocation project, and his hard work and his leadership, along with that of many others on this project, has ensured that the city's new operations center is indeed a world-class facility staffed by dedicated, well-trained, public safety professionals. I commend Rick for his tireless oversight of this major project, and I believe he absolutely deserves special recognition for a well, job well done. Thank you so much, Rick. This is indeed a wonderful day, and we're so fortunate to have such a wonderful facility, uh, and especially um, in, a, in a wonderful city. And I thank you all, and hopefully this will be a step in the right direction so we can help all of our citizens in Lexington in a better way. Thank you so much. Councilmember Sally, thank you so much for recognizing Rick especially and uh, and Director Dossett has a little commemoration that he wants to offer. Come on up. Thank you sir. Uh, Rick if you would come up front and center. Yes, you. <laughs> you know, I, I have to tell you that, that Rick and I kind of grew up together, um, and that's a good thing. I grew up in the Louisville uh, Police Department, moved on to the Louisville Metro Police Department, and at the same time, Rick grew up in the Lexington Fayette Police Department, and we, uh, we had a great relationship all the way up through the ranks. And Rick is a background guy, but Rick uh, was, was a, a primary driving force um, on this project. And at this point, Rick, I'd like to present you with the director's coin for your efforts in the completion of this project. Next and finally, I'm going to ask our Public Safety Commissioner, Ronnie Baston, to join me here at the podium. Um, Ronnie has been overseeing this project, and I asked Ronnie if he would point out some of our city employees who have worked especially hard on this project. Now, before I ask him to come on up here, or come on, where's Ronnie? Come on up, Ronnie. I want to say that, um, you know, this project represents another milestone for the city in terms of in terms of projects and projects that the city has been managing through. And that itself is a significant step. With the help of the council, with the guidance of the council, um, where is Sally? Sally is here somewhere. Sally Hamilton. Sally has become the expert project manager for the whole city. She's done this. Yeah, let's give her a hand. Our chief administrative officer. So Ronnie's going to represent Sally and everybody in the city, and he's going to point out some of those employees who have worked so hard on this project. Ronnie. Well, thank you, Mayor. And as I looked out at the, uh, the crowd today, I did see some of the public safety partners and other partners that we have that aren't up front that, uh, that have helped us so much and help us every day accomplish the mission that we have. Uh, one of those is up front, is Greg Morawczyk. Greg uh, is at Transylvania University, a great partner, works very closely with our police and fire. Um, Kathy Witt, our sheriff, is over in the corner over here. Kathy is a tremendous partner of ours, has been for 
as long as she's been in the position that she's in, we're always glad to work with her on at every opportunity we get. Uh, man, when we have those disasters, Cliff Felton from KU, who's standing back here, is a great ally and a great partner, and we get to work with him uh, a lot. He's always a, a professional individual. We look forward to seeing him come through the door. Uh, another internal person who hasn't been mentioned yet that knows far more about all this technology than I ever will, who's been a tremendous asset to the urban county government, is our chief information officer, Aldona Valsanti. Aldona, thank you so much for all the hours you put into this. As you've heard today from Mayor Gray and our council members, today is a great day for Lexington, our public safety team, and our citizens. It's a day that's been made possible by many, many people. Building a world-class facility like this one doesn't just happen. It takes people, many of them, working around the clock to make sure that each purchase, product, and piece of the puzzle fit together seamlessly. Time won't allow me to, to name everybody that has worked on this and contributed to it, but I am gonna try to give you a general idea of some of the key players that we've had and how many have had to work together to actually get to where we are today. We have federal, state, and local partners who've worked for nearly two years together, giving us any assistance that we needed and authorizing millions of dollars for this project. A very special thank you goes to our great partner, Michael Dossett, Director of Kentucky Emergency Management. Michael. <laughs> Kudos go to Churchill McGee, our construction team, and Murphy Graves Trimble, our architectural firm, who have repurposed what used to be a vacant juvenile detention facility into this modern communications hub. There are also several LFUCG employees who went above and beyond to make sure this project got done while maintaining their normal duties every day. So this was an additional project that they had to do, and that's no small feat. Some of these folks are Pat Tatum, our director of LexCall 311, <clears throat> Oops, excuse me. Pat Duggar, our Director of Emergency Management. Robert Stack, Enhance 911. The, the next three individuals are from our General Services Division. Mark Arnold. Sam Williams. Jessica Walker, and numerous folks with building maintenance, security, and our streets and roads division. <clears throat> Excuse me. Special, th there's already been a special thanks to uh, my administrative officer, Rick Curtis, for all the time that he put into this. Rick has lived here, I think. I think he actually slept here some nights. But I will also want to thank his wife and son who are in the uh, audience today because they've given him to us, and I know it's required a lot of commitment and a lot of time away from home. So thank you all for sharing him with us and allowing him to help us bring this, prog this uh, project to fruition. I also want to thank project manager Lynn Figler, who's been on site every day and uh, helped us to get to where we are. He's been a great asset to the project. As I said, time isn't going to permit me to, to talk about everybody who's involved, but those of you that are here that had a part in this or did something with this project, we just want you to know how much we appreciate it and how much your efforts were valued. In just a few moments, each one of you are going to have an opportunity to walk around and see our new facility that we're very proud of. But before you do, I want to tell you just a little bit about the functions and what is going to be occurring in this building on a daily basis. This POC is now the full-time home of LexCall 311, Enhanced 911, and Emergency Management. This is the first time these three entities have been housed in the same building. LexCall receives well over 300,000 calls per year, averaging between 800 and 1,000 calls a day. E911, for that, their number is 1,700 calls per day or 628,000 calls per year. This facility is equipped to answer all of those calls, almost a million per year, assess the needs and get help where it needs to go quickly and efficiently. The PSOC will also serve as a combined dispatch center for both police and fire. When you call 911, someone at this center will take your call. Whether you have a fire emergency or need the police, 
both agencies will now have access to the same information right away. This will also be the public safety hub during a natural disaster. The recent Hurricane Matthew showed us just how important it is to be prepared for and to be able to respond to a disaster. In this building, we have the technology, space, and resources that we need to handle most anything that could come our way. The building itself is even built to withstand extreme conditions. Having 311, 911, and emergency management together under one roof will improve the way we serve the citizens of Lexington, especially during an emergency. Instead of getting on the phone or the radio uh, to, across town, we'll be able to problem solve within the same building. We can walk down the hall and problem solve with those key players that need to be at the table. Citizens can rest assured that improved internal communication will lead to better communication with the public and better service overall. Thank you all for joining us as we officially open the center. I invite you all to take a look at the meeting rooms and workspaces throughout the building. Uh, we're going to be actually giving tours right after the ribbon cutting, so please stay with us for the ribbon cutting and afterwards explore the space and enjoy some refreshments with us. Thank you. Thank you.